Hello YTPC, this is Steve, and you're watching Smoking Cardboard. I'm trying to uh, fit this in a very busy schedule. <laughs> I have Ultimate Frisbee, uh, where I'm going to be competing less than an hour. For some reason, I've uh, packed flake, but tomorrow... I'm uh, leaving for vacation, and I don't think I'll have any time to do all the stuff that I was planning on doing, so. I'm smoking the very last of my Astley's 44 Dark Virginia Flake. A dark, powerful Virginia Flake. Well, after, and I'm smoking it in my J. Mouton, uh, Starship, I don't know. <laughs> A squat bulldog. Um, this pipe, uh, smokes great. So thanks, Jason. If, uh... I have a hard time believing this blend is only Virginia's. I pick up uh, Dark Fired in it. There was times when I was smoking this that I thought about the Wessex Burley slices. I know it's drier now than it was uh, when I first had it. I left it in the tin the whole time. Um, my rule generally of thumb for someone that doesn't smoke a lot, uh, and this is my climate too, I can leave this in a tin, uh, especially a flake, uh, for a month and it's going to be fine as long as I smoke it down in that month. Uh, beyond that, you think it's going to take you longer to smoke it than that, then just put it in a jar. Um, very good tobacco, really high grades for me. I wouldn't say this is, uh, the things that lead to it being more, mostly Virginia's is that the Nick hit is a lot lower, uh, than if there was a lot of Burleys in here. But it definitely tastes uh, rich, like that smoky, dark-fired smokiness in there. Savory, uh, yeah, almost like an earthiness, but really enjoyable, relaxing. Like it's the sort of uh, blend that you could definitely smoke bowl after bowl of it. It's not too heavy, you know, on the palate or whatever. Really great blend. Hard to get a hold of. I think I tried to get it last year and I missed out. So when we got some drops this year, I was paying attention to it. I think it was because I was kind of after the campaign flake and or one of the flakes. And someone said Astley's uh, 109, I think, was similar to that. And that one I got. And then someone else said that the 44 was really good. And uh, they weren't wrong. It is really good. Anywho. I uh, want to pull up the stats from uh, so far this year. I'll try to put a link to that video where I talked about it at the beginning of the year. I made a Excel document where you can kind of put in your tobaccos and stuff and you have different stats. 
I don't have time to like deep dive. Like I said, I was just throwing this together. And uh, so far, this uh, first half of the year, I've had uh, 126 smokes. So in February, I kind of was doing this whole uh, doctor stuff, trying to figure out what was going on. Found out that I'm pretty, uh, I don't know, have some sort of autoimmune uh, response to uh, smoke. So I get irritated a lot easier. But I th think we found some solution that's really helped. Tongue-wise and all that sort of stuff, I've felt the best I have in a while. I still have to be super careful. Like I can't, I just can't smoke whenever I want, whatever I want. So that being said, uh, in January I had 24 smokes that were, uh, if I had to guess, most, most mostly uh, Englishes, but I'd have to pull this up here real quick. <laughs> Let's see. So, yeah, I smoked uh, Abington GLPs the most, which I think Abington GLPs is such a a good like Balkan blend. Uh, I really like that. I'm I'm excited to smoke that next winter. Then in February, I uh, I didn't smoke as much because, like I said, doctor stuff. And uh, I only smoked 13 times in February, being assorted, but all English is Strat Stratfordshire. A C and D. That's a mild English that I like. Accountants mixture. Another English. Smoked some uh, Montgomery GLPs. That one's uh, Virginia with some Kentucky. Peterson Nightcap. Star of the East Cornell and Deal. That was a new one that I tried this year that I was really s surprised by. I liked it a lot. Uh, there's a Tobacco that's impossible to get here. Uh, 1820 Flake from Germain's. And that one kind of reminds me of it. So I like that. And so on and so forth. So then into March, I didn't smoke once. That was part of the, hey, I'm going to stop smoking to see, you know, help doctors figure out what's going on. Um, which it worked. But then back in April, I uh, started smoking again. Got 24 times in April, 31 times in May, June. Uh, I think I had, so far this year, I smoked uh, 46 or something like that, different blends. So I smoke a lot of different stuff. <laughs> a lot, a lot of different stuff. And I just think uh, that's fun. In April, I smoked the most of uh, Revore Plug by Gawith and Hogarth. Really delicious. It's strong, um, nicotine-wise and flavor. But I uh, smoked uh, some other stuff like Exhausted Rooster, GLP's Montgomery, Solani Silver Flake, some of these blends, Amphora, Burley, um, cross, Former's Cross Grain Flake. I was smoking all the stuff that I just wanted to because after that break, it was like, oh man, I'm going to smoke. 
all the blends that I just want to smoke. <laughs> and I gotta say, it really uh, helped me appreciate uh, the flavors of the tobacco taking that break. May the, with 31 smokes, I smoked the most of uh, Anniversary Flake. That's the tin I haven't yet finished upstairs yet. Um, exhausted Rooster, I had that a bunch. Um, I'm planning on smoking that a bunch more because on this vacation trip, I was going to take some Exhausted Rooster. My favorite time to smoke uh, Exhausted Rooster by C&D is in the mornings. Um, and on vacation is when I get like, that's what I do. In the morning, I'm just going to go smoke some tobacco. Because I don't get to do that except on some Saturdays. And the morning is like 10 o'clock for me. All you guys that wake up super early, not me. I have a friend that uh, is trying to get me to ride mountain bikes with him. And he's like, oh, yeah, we meet at 530 in the morning. I was like, the only way I'm riding at 530 in the morning is if I never went to sleep that night. <laughs> Uh, other stuff that I smoked, uh, Rattray's Howl of the Wind four times, Solani, uh, or Peter Stuckby English Luxury, really like that. I think that would be my, like, oh, if you could only have one English blend, what would you choose? I would be really tempted to choose that one. It's really good. Just, uh, it doesn't disappoint. I, whenever I have it, I'm just happy I'm smoking it, you know. Um, and to my palate, and maybe I, I haven't had this stuff in a long time, but, uh, it reminded me of Jermaine's, uh, Prembroke. Lot, I tried a lot of different stuff in, uh, May. And then June, let me get it up here. Thirty-two smokes. As Ashley's uh, forty-four. I have uh, nine smokes of warped uh, Saint Espresso. I really like. Oh my goodness! If someone said you have pick an aromatic, that one's the one. Delicious. Really good. Really good. I only got uh, two tins when it came out and I was kind of eh, not shouldn't be buying tobacco but I'm really glad I did I hope that it's like a yearly thing they drop or whatever and uh, just buy two tins each year then I have um, Hearth and Home Anniversary Flake again I'm smoking through that tin and this Ashley's I'm almost done with that one Next, I'm going to be smoking a uh, tin I got from a friend in UK, Adam. And I'm going to be smoking uh, uh, Peterson's uh, Dark Flake. Previously, Dunhill Dark Flake. And maybe I'll remember enough about uh, Robert McConnell's Black Flake to be able to compare the two. But I might have to open... A uh, black flake tin to compare the two. Wessex uh, Classic Virginia, that's been hitting the spot. Really tasty. There's some of these blends that I realized that, like, uh, some of my pipes, I would, uh, even though they're all filtered, I would get tongue bite. Not like bad, just irritation from these blends with others' pipes, I didn't. Didn't get any ir irritation. And uh, to my surprise, it's the slightly bent pipes uh, that I've had for a long time. So part of that might be uh, incorrectly correlating facts. But those are the two that uh, I'm not getting bite as much. Anyway. That's the stats. If you guys uh, did that recording, I'd be curious 
of your analysis of your halfway through the year? I just uh, I started doing the stats because uh, board games uh, I, I do stats. It's become uh, really helpful to uh, actually understand uh, comparisons. You can say, well, this is how many times I've had it. This is how much I liked it when I did it, which I have that recorded here too. Because um, sometimes our memories fails, fail us, um, especially mine. And especially with board games, you know, I'd be like, oh, I think I played that game, you know, a lot, and then I hadn't. Or uh, I thought, oh, I don't, I don't think I played that much. Oh, man, I played that game like 15 times. Uh, mostly all this player count. Yeah, it's a fun game. But anyway, this tobacco is delicious. Definitely has uh, some some dark fired in it. Made me some burly. Wonderful weather outside. Just trying to keep the lawn alive. We got just we just sit on sand here where I'm at, and so they put like a little a little bit of topsoil on top of the sand so the grass just burns out super fast and then there's like no nutrients so you gotta fertilize it and do all that stuff but you can just let the lawn go but then it's just gonna get taken over by weeds it's easier to keep it alive <laughs> I've also uh, been trying to take more seriously, um, um, just uh, trying to cut a couple pounds. I get really, I'm getting really annoyed uh, that some of my, my pants aren't fitting as, as well. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And I do not want to buy other clothes so I just need to uh, and that's where I, I kind of realized that um, I can get into a habit where I am uh, trying to satisfy a just general hunger uh, it doesn't matter when it happens um, so generally speaking I don't I I'm pretty, I, I can be pretty disciplined with uh, the way I eat, but um, it's really difficult because as I say, you can't, you can't eat something you didn't purchase. <laughs> so, so in some ways, um, the battle's won at the grocery store, but I don't do the grocery shopping, so that doesn't help. And my wife really likes snacks, and so it gets to be you know after supper it's nine o'clock at night I ate four hours ago or whatever I'm hungry again and so I'll eat a snack have a drink um, just eat and um, just kind of get annoyed by being hungry you know and I need to embrace being hungry as being natural and healthy not starving hungry, but just normal. <laughs> oh, I'm going to bed hungry. That's fine. You ate supper, Steve. You're fine. So, we'll see. Uh, I know you can do all these things where you can eat all kinds of food that has no calories in it, blah, blah, blah. I have no interest in doing that. I'm always by uh, making changes that are completely sustainable. I don't want to make a drastic change that I can't just do day after day, year after year. So usually for me that is uh, exercise and uh, limiting intake. But the ultimate frisbee and we play this now for like two hours oh my gosh run around with these college kids I don't know how 
I don't know. I do a lot of walking, I guess. But sometimes it surprise them. Run up. Take the disc away. You just got to do that a couple times, and now all the throwers are really cautious. And you can just be lazier. <laughs> Anyways, this is really boring. I'm sorry. I'm rambling. It was great seeing, talking to you all. I'm not seeing anybody right now, but I watch your videos. Uh, next week, I won't be watching much. I'll just be uh, having a good time, hanging out with my sister, brother-in-law, and friends. And uh, I hope you guys all have a wonderful 4th of July if you're in the United States. And if not, I hope you have a great week, too. We'll talk to you all later. Bye.